Welcome back to Coding Money. Today, I want to give you an inside look at my newest startup project, a unique and one-of-a-kind phone number exchange website that I built using the Mern stack. I'll show you the what, why, and how I made the website. I'll take you on a journey from the spark of the idea to soft launch minimum viable product. I'm excited to open the website exclusively to my YouTube subscribers for testing and feedback. I have a very good news for you at the end of the video, so make sure not to miss it and watch the video till the end. Now without any further ado, let's get started. Let's talk about the idea. I got the idea for this website from another website which I had developed long time ago, which took me like a couple hours to make and unexpectedly, without putting any kind of work to market the website, it organically grew to 30,000 unique visitors a day. So let's take a step back and share with you how I got the idea for the previous website and how that led me to develop this new website. One day, I was brainstorming for an idea for my next website project, and I was doing keyword research on search engine, and I was specifically looking for keywords for which there were less competition. And I think I came across a keyword that says something like what's up friends, uh, what's up numbers and Viber numbers. So I figured there were what's up and Viber users looking to find people that they can chat to outside their friends list. So I targeted those keywords and I built uh, the website up in a couple hours and published it to the World Wide Web and I forgot about it. I came back to check in a few days and the website had organically grown to about 30,000 unique visitors a day. But there were two big problems with the website. I had not thought about the legal aspects of it and I was also not verifying the phone numbers to make sure it's the phone numbers of the person using the website. I started receiving lots of complaints from the users and also the Viber company reached out with a legal dispute so I had to shut down the, the website. Fortunately, I fixed those issues on my new website. Since I know there is a demand for it because of the overwhelming response I received on my previous website, therefore, I'm improving the same idea and making a safe digital space for people to exchange phone numbers for the purposes of friendship, dating, or business networking. Before I show you the MVP uh, and tell you how it works, I want to talk to you about the concept of minimum viable product or MVP for short. It's a key part of the lean startup methodology for developing new products and businesses. A minimum viable product is like a prototype uh, that has very basic features to effectively showcase your idea and validate if people want your product before you invest more time and money into fully developing it out. The advantage of an MVP is that you can gather feedback to improve your product. You can measure and learn what features really matter to your customers. Some examples of companies that famously started with a simple uh, MVP include Dropbox, uh, Groupon, Zappos, and Air Airbnb and more. Their initial product was very basic but enough to demonstrate the core idea to customers. Now let me show you the website and tell you how it works. I'll reveal um, the real reason for the project and also share a good news with you at the end of the video. You can access the website by opening your web browser and typing smsbc.com in the address bar. As you can see, I have a f few members on the website already, thanks to my Facebook friends. Using this website is pretty straightforward. As you can see, there's our latest users who have verified their numbers. You can check out their profile and read about them. And if you want, if you find someone with common interest, you can request to get their phone numbers by clicking on this button, but you need to be logged in to do that. So let's try to log in by clicking on this login with Google button, select the Google account. If it is your first time logging into the site, you'll need to fill out this short form. By the way, if you're curious how I build this form, I have a couple tutorials, React Bootstrap form validation and React Safe form data to MongoDB database. The link to these tutorials should pop on the screen. I'll also leave links in the description if you're interested to check it out. Let's fill out this form.
I agree to the terms and privacy notice. Click continue. In this step, you'll need to verify your phone number. If you don't verify your phone number, your profile will not be activated. So enter your phone number. Click request verification code. You'll get an SMS with verification code. Enter that code here. Click verify phone. Your phone number has been successfully verified and your profile is active now. That's good. If you use your phone number with any of uh, these services, you can check these options and click finish. You direct it to the homepage. Now let's make a new friend. Let me check out this profile. He's a software engineer and he looks like someone I can develop some projects together with. So I'll request to get his number. I can write an optional message here. Click send request. Now he will get an SMS notification regarding my request. He can either accept or reject my request. If he accepts the request, our phone numbers will be exchanged and we can text or call each other. I encourage you to try it out and let me know if you encounter any issues. I would also appreciate your feedback and suggestion for new features and in the comment section. Okay, let's talk about the target audience. Uh, my target audience is primarily uh, in Middle East uh, and Asian countries such as India, Pakistan, Iran, Afghanistan, Tajikistan and others. I understand that some people might uh, be hesitant to use the website due to privacy concerns. That's perfectly understandable. And I encourage everyone to make informed decisions about how they share their personal information online. However, I believe this website can be a valuable tool for people in many different regions. And I'm committed to creating a safe and secure experience for all the users. Let's talk about the tech stack. I went with the merge stack to build the platform because I wanted it to be fast and scalable in the future. I used MongoDB to store all the data like users and profile information, etc. Express for the backend APIs and routing. I used React.js for the front end and I, I built the uh, UI components uh, using functional components. I used Node.js for the server environments. I like Mern because it's JavaScript based, uh, which allows me to use JavaScript uh, and uh, use uh, code between the front and the back. I want to tell you a little bit about the tech stack of smsbc.com website and how all these different components and technologies communicate. If you're here watching this video right now, chances are you've tried to find resources previously to figure out exactly how to get React to work with Express or how to get React to work with MongoDB or Express with MongoDB. I found over time that there's a lot of content specifically around like how to use React or videos on how to use Redux or a course on how to use Express but it seems like there's really not a lot of content out there that tells you how to use all these different technologies together. So that's going to be the primary concern of this section of this video. I want you to walk away having a really good idea of how all these different pieces work together to make a real application. That's going to be the number one goal for me in this section. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get through this diagram really quick. Whenever a user navigates inside of their browser to our domain, smsbusy.com, we're going to send them back an HTML document and some JavaScript files that contain a React application. So when a user goes to smsbusy.com, we're going to send them some files that will get some content or some HTML to appear on the screen. That's going to be the React side of our application. Now, the React side of our application doesn't really know exactly what to show to the user. It needs some amount of data to show the right stuff, right? Like if you want to show the latest list of users who signed up on our website, the React side of our application has to get this information from somewhere in our application. We're going to use MongoDB to record an store all the different users and their profile information and the number of requests they send and receive over time. And so one of the main problems that the beginner de uh, React developers face is to learn 
how to solve is to effectively communicate all the data that we store inside of MongoDB database with our React application. Now, the React application that we have put together is never going to talk directly to MongoDB. Instead, we're going to put an express API between the React and the MongoDB. This express API is going to contain a bunch of business logic to take the incoming request from our React application, pull some information out of the MongoDB database, and then send that information back to the React side of our application. So essentially, you can imagine that a user visits smsbusy.com inside their browser. We send them the React application. The React application boots up and it asks the Express API for some data. The Express API pulls some information out of the MongoDB database and then it sends that all back to the React application where it is then used to show some content on the screen to the user. Now the Express API and the React application are going to communicate entirely through HTTP requests or AJAX requests. Every single one of these requests is going to contain some little amount of JSON. The Express API and the MongoDB, on the other hand, will be communicating through a, a little bit more internal system of communication. Like I have routers, controllers, and I've created a model here that uses the Mongoose library that contain rules for getting data into and out of the MongoDB database. But I don't want to make this diagram complicated and make this video very long. Just a very high level overview of how uh, the application is laid out and how things are going to be talking together really at the end of the day. What I want to communicate right now is that the React application will not talk directly to the MongoDB database. Instead, there is going to be this Express API setting uh, between the two. So I think that's enough on kind of high level overview for right now. Also, I'm using some external services such as Google OAuth for authentication. And I'm also using an external SMS service for sending out SMS notifications. Let's talk about the build process. I start out by using Eraser.io for brainstorming and uh, technical design of my application. And then I start out by wireframing the user experience, the UX and UI design in Figma. This allows me to plan out the key workflow in the pages. Next, I built the React front-end components like the homepage, profile, dashboard, etc. I made them fully responsive as well. In tandem, I developed the Node Express backend with APIs for user authentication, implemented the Google OAuth authentication and phone number verifications with SMS and more. I connected the front end to the back end using the async await calls. For the database, I modeled the data into Mongo uh, schemas for efficient queries and aggregations. Indexing and caching also helps the performance. And voila, after some hard work, I had an MVP ready for launch. Now let's talk about monetization. There are a few uh, streams of revenue I'm thinking of uh, uh, implementing uh, when I start getting enough traffic. The first one is advertisement. I might allow advertisers to buy ads uh, on the website. Uh, the second one is value added services. Users can pay extra to feature or boost their profiles and get extra perks. I'm, I'm focusing on creating real value upfront rather than monetizing early. Marketing interaction, my favorite topic. And if I include that in this video, this is going to get really uh, long. Please let me know if you're interested to learn more about my marketing strategy for this website. I can create a dedicated video about it. All right, so let's talk why. Why did I create this project? Um, this website project serves three purposes for me. First, I'm building upon a validated concept. The high demand for my previous website suggests a genuine need for what this project offers. The experience from my previous website provide a solid foundation for further development. Secondly, it allows me to gain practical experience with the Merge stack. What better way is there to learn it? new technology than to get your hands dirty and build something using it. 
Third, this project serves as a real-world showcase for my YouTube channel, allowing me to create more impactful and engaging tutorial videos featuring production-ready features. Now, the good news. I think this is the part you all have been waiting since the beginning of the video. When I post tutorials when I was building out this website, a lot of you asked about the source code for the project. So the good news is that soon I'll be open sourcing this project so you'll be able to see all the code and contribute. And when we start making revenue, I'll be sharing it with all the contributors. So if you don't want to miss it, then please subscribe to this channel. And I'm also looking for a co-founder for the startup idea. Let me know if you're interested. There are definitely lots of improvements to be made, but overall this has the potential to be a great business and I'm excited to see where we can take it next. If you found this video useful, a thumbs up would be highly appreciated and don't forget the usual stuff. Subscribe and hit the notification bell icon. This really supports the channel and helps me create great content for you guys. Trading.